These are the plaintiffs, Christina and Zarul Vasquez. Christina says her 14-year-old daughter, Claudia, and the defendant's son dated, and she ended up running away from home after she got into an argument with her. No one knew where she was. The SWAT team was combing the woods for her for six days, and everyone was trying to find her. The defendants told the cops they didn't know where she was, but six days later, they found her hiding out at the defendant's house. The defendants knew she was there. They hid her from everyone. Now they have to pay the $5,000 they're seeking for pain and suffering. These are the defendants, Melinda and Christopher McManus. Melinda says she found the plaintiff's daughter was hiding in her house the day after she went missing because her son was hiding her. From what she understood, the girl was claiming she was being abused at home, and her son felt he was protecting her. She's currently fighting obstruction charges in criminal court. She felt as if she was helping this girl, and certainly doesn't owe the plaintiffs $5,000. They're accused of hiding a fugitive. The defendants filed a camera suit for $2,000 for harassment. All parties, please, you're right here. Be seated, come to order, please. Let the have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, in. Okay, Christina and Zaul Vasquez, yes. you are suing Melinda and Christopher McManus, who are the parents of your daughter's boyfriend for $5,000 for harboring your daughter during a time that you thought your daughter was missing. Yes, ma'am. What happened? So Friday, um, August 21st was the last day of school and my daughter had to go take a Spanish ex exam and she didn't want to go take it. Um, I told her I was going to take her phone away if she didn't go to school. We got into an argument. She ran What was away. the reason that she didn't want to take it? She said it wasn't important. She felt like she was going to fail anyway. She's how old? 14. Okay. And she just refused. And when I told her I was going to take the phone, she freaked out and ran away. Literally, physically ran away? Yes. Where did she go? She ran out our back door. We lived by a wooded area um, to a side street. And that was the last place that a person, like one of the neighbors, seen her. Did you, and did you, were you home? I was at work when I got the phone. And then, so, but you were home. Yeah. Were you heading to work? Yeah. Okay. I was heading to work and I have two other kids at home as well. How old are the other kids? 15 and five. So she just took off. We just, I just assumed you she'd, she'd be show right up. back. Uh, yeah. yeah. She right. never has, has ran away before. before. So. All right. So then what happened? So then, you know, I call my husband. I explain everything. We're like, all right, we'll just let her cool off. I'm texting her like, where are you? You know, she's not responding. And then like come around three o'clock and nobody's heard from her. Not even the boyfriend that she lives and breathes for at this age. How old is the boyfriend? 16. Yeah. And she's 14. All right, go on. Um, and then, you know, at that point, we called the police, made the report. At that point, we, it wasn't missing person. It was just a runaway. Right. And then as time, the night got later, it got darker. You know, things got more serious. She's a 14 year old girl. She has a little bit of mental health issues, you know, right. that we're dealing with. So we were just worried we didn't know. And their son was literally the only person that my daughter spoke to and we have the phone records and so but I assumed that it was okay so did you go to their house and talk to them to find out if your daughter we, was there we went the next day and just asked have they seen her did you talk to the boy yourself the, the boyfriend comes yeah. out he said that she uh, when she was saying that she was running away she said I'm running away and I'm going to my, a friend of mine's house and that I'm and that not she shut off the you. phone and he never heard from her again. Right, that That's not, what he said. So the police pursued, the police took this very seriously. Yeah. Right. She was missing for we how many as well. days? Well, six of nights. Of course you did. Six nights. Six nights? Six, six nights. Six nights. So, yeah. so what's happening for those six days? The police so, are having an all-point search? We have six detectives, three at night, three during the day, 24 hours, searching, community searching, um, SWAT teams in the woods. Flyers. Water, flyers. Helicopters. Count, helicopters, helicopters, bloodhound dogs, SWAT, SWAT teams. teams, community searches. So I spoke with them. They no leads, them. no leads, and then Nothing. what happens? Well, I mean, basically, we feared the worst because. Well, you should at that point. Well, you should, now, the, the, they had the detectives convinced that the detectives would come to my house because, as a mother, I'm like that. That boy, she lives and breathes for him. Something he he's got to know something. So the detectives are coming to my house telling me, I really don't think he has this her. Is, like, that's how convincing he was. They searched that house about six times. Searched your house? They searched their house six times, at least. 
They came over on the sixth morning and said, we just got done doing another search of their house. And we truly do not know where she is. We, we truly what believe happened? that they don't know. And then. And then a couple hours later. And so the mother, Melinda's phone. And who did? The, the police, the, police, the, detectives. the detectives. So how did they get your phone? It wasn't my phone, it was my son's phone. How did they get, okay. so they, got, well, they should have gotten his they phone They confiscated the it. But no, but when you say confiscated it, you mean like this? Took it? Yes. They so found, at this point, they found a message to his mother asking her to distract dad because Claudia has to go to the bathroom. And then the detective said, that's it. They went in and then they found her. They didn't waste no time. They didn't knock. They just raided the house. Where was That's she? My... Underneath Under the bed. his bed. Whose bed? The son's bed. Tyler's bed. Show me the report. Do you have the report? Yes. Hand it over, please. Mom, mission impossible. She needs to pee. Mommy, how are we supposed to occupy daddy? Respondent, that's your son. I'm trying to think of a way right now because she has to get downstairs and back up without him seeing. What? What is this? Uh, no, put your hand down, daddy. You're the one they were trying to occupy. You're yes, the daddy in this, right? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you tell me what's going on, mommy? That was the first day she was there and I told my son he could not have her at my house. He needed to get her out. I thought she was gone. I'm sorry. Did you tell that to the police? No. And that So is when the fault. police were looking for this child, you didn't tell them she was here. I thought I was keeping her safe because Why? I, because she told me she was being abused. By whom? Her parents. How? She says she gets beat. She's coming to school with black eyes. She had a Have you ever seen her go to school with a black eye? No, but when she came to my house, she had a huge goose egg on her head. A huge goose egg. Did you take a picture? No. Okay, because I saw the pictures that the police took. It wasn't a huge goose egg. It was, I did see marks. Now, let me ask you a question. Why didn't you just tell the police that? Because then she would be safe. You could just turn her over to the police because the police were at your house on the 21st. Why didn't you just turn her over, turn her over to the police? I wasn't home when the police were there. Why didn't you pick up the phone and call the police when you heard they came to your house? That's, that's on me. Why did you lie to the police? I thought I was keeping her safe. Over and over, you lied to the police. Each day, they came to your house and you lied. When did you find out that you were harboring a missing child? When, uh, first of all, I didn't know the whole time. Um, and the message that he said that they were trying to distract me because they didn't want me to see her because they knew I was going to call the cops because I could lose. Did you end up getting charged for obstruction? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, you got charged for obstruction. What's going on with your criminal case? It's still... Pending. Do you understand that while you kept the location of that child secret, because I don't believe first, oh, I told him, to, I told him not to have her there. She was found hiding under his bed in your house. Six days. Do you understand that there were parents suffering for six days while you did this? Do you understand how lame your answer to me, I thought I was protecting her, is when there are police looking for her who could protect her? Yes, Your Honor. She's hiding under a bed of your 16-year-old son? What control do you have over your 16-year-old son? What did you do when you found out? Me? Yeah, you. The cops had to get between us because I was throwing them out of the house for lying to me and for harboring a minor in my What house. are you thinking? Are you an adult? Are you a mother? Is that your actual son? Yeah. How is it that you could allow something like this to go on for six days? A manhunt looking for a missing 14-year-old girl who hasn't come home in six days, yeah. and you know where she is. You know where she is. Did your wife keep this from you for how long? For all times, yeah. Your Honor. There's no, oh, I, told him, I told him to, I told him that, to, that she had, he had to take her out of there. Yeah. And that's special because she spent six days there. Your Honor, they didn't barge into my house. They knocked and asked permission to go up and look, and as every other time, I, did, I gave them the permission. And what I don't understand was where was she all those permission times? Why don't you tell me, since you're the inside man, tell me where she was, Melinda. I don't know. You'd have well, to every time the police knocked, time. would you go up and tell your son, hey, they're here? I wasn't home was every home. single time. I was at work. Now that everything happened, I presume that as parents, you have sat your son down and gotten to the bottom of what occurred. So where oh, yeah. was she every time the police came? Storage area. We have a house that has a big storage area in the up, up in the second floor. There's so they would hear a knock and she would go to the storage area? That's right. And where was she the rest of that time? 
How Judge, do you not know that honestly, there's a 14-year-old living in your house for six days? The, I honestly did not. You never know walk she was into there. your son's room. Judge, I'm a certified youth therapist. I could lose my job for this. That's not my question. My question is, you never walk into your son's room. Um, usually upstairs, no, because when I do, his room is trashed and it upsets me. Okay. I go up there once a week. That has a total ring of truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, you didn't find your wife was acting. Hank How long have you been married to her? We've been together for 25 years. And you didn't find that she was acting a little hinky? No, ma'am. No, judge. And did she, uh, uh, let me ask you a question. You say, you know, they had a, the police had to stand between me and my son. What'd you do when you found out your wife knew the whole time? Uh, my wife's heart is a lot bigger than her brain. I mean, her I wouldn't Her brain is about this big. And I don't know about how big her heart is because your wife is massively, massively out of line to harbor someone else's child. I agree. That's not a heart thing, okay? You have no idea. Do you know what you put these parents through? Do you know the suffering they went through? Do you know the tax dollars that you spent by having this massive manhunt with he helicopters going on while you kept your little mouth shut about her whereabouts? Do you understand the amount of suffering that you poured on these people? Yes, Your Honor. Do you? Yes. I hope they seek jail time against you. She's never even I'm worried apologized. that that won't happen. What'd She's you say? She's never apologized, ever. Never. Apologize! I'm very sorry for harboring Yeah, can you look at me in my eyes, though? That's I'm very point. sorry for harboring your daughter. I should have never done it. I was taking her word, and I didn't know what was going on, and it's my fault. I don't it is. For a second, it is. never looked at me. The Not six years, seconds. the six, it yes. is. The six days of suffering are completely your fault. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. Were these parents wrong by not telling the plaintiffs and not telling the cops? Absolutely, because in this world, justice is very important. And uh, the decent and the right thing to do and the moral thing to do, and I can speak as a rabbi and say that, is they had to report it. To the cops? Yes. Not necessarily to the parents of the girl, but to no, the cops? To the cops. Oh, that's interesting, what do you say? I think they should have at least told the parents where the daughter was, and if they had concerns, go to the police. They're liable. Fair enough. Good points here. Going inside the courtroom. Now, what's going on with your daughter now? Um, we have her in counseling. She has a mentor. We're all in family counseling as well. How is it going? Well, with the interruption mm. from their family, it's not going well mm. at all. Tell me what you mean by that. Um, every day, my husband and I will leave to work. She sneaks out. She goes to their house. The father told the officers she can come here any she wants because there's no order of protection between Claudia and her. Even though- Why would you, can I just ask you a question? Why are you yes. nodding? Why would you guys invite the 14 year old back to your house after all this? This was after the judge upstate had said that her and Tyler could see each other. And Why would you no want story. her and Tyler to see her? Why would you want this to continue? You have zero control over your child? No, He's 16. I have all control over Do all you? Three then of my why sons. would you not want to put the kibosh on this because when it can he, only lead to some kind of trouble? It was legal. I, that's not my question, is it? No, ma'am, but no, no, Your Honor, it's not, but it was legal, and all I wanted to do was follow the laws. And is it? Because you could follow the law and not have her in well, your I was house. Supervised. Considering that you were harboring her, willingly not. or not, and <laughs> that your wife is charged with illegally harboring her and obstruction justice. So why would you want to continue to have her there and to, to, to flower this relationship? The judge at home said that there was no restraining order and they were allowed you to see You nodded each your other. head when she said that you had said she's welcome there anytime. She is, as long as it's legal. Right. And supervised, which the, the judge supervised didn't say, by but I, by me. Who's but. supervising? Oh, all of a sudden you're home now all the time and you know what's going on? I, Six days there was a fugitive in your house, a runaway child, but now you're all over it and you know what's going on and supervising stuff. He's 16 and in love. I mean, he's very depression and he likes her and he loves her. And Your Honor, the probation officer went over to their house and told them, Claudia is not allowed to be here. Oh, whatsoever. well then why don't you go to a judge and get them arrested or why don't you so go to- then They we, can't arrest her because she's only not 14. Not her, him. Well, we, we keep trying. We, we, we keep, send the police there. We keep there, trying to have them arrested. And they just all they'll do is they'll remove Claudia and take her home. So on August 28th, she was there. We've had it. We call the police. We send them there. They send her home. Again, now that's the same day the anonymous CPS reports called in on us. Also, oh, let's talk about so that. So the 29th, oh, yeah, wait. So CPS Who filed a CPS complaint. This phone call is supposedly from my 14-year-old daughter who doesn't even have a phone. 
but she does because Melinda got her a phone. And then there was an anonymous report. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how uh, another set of parents can decide they're going to parent your this child. This is our frustration. I'm right, sorry, right, and right. that there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. There has to be something you can do well, about it. Well, their son turned 17 on September 4th, and we told our daughter that if she has any contact with him, that we will be pressing the statutory rape charges. That is the only level up that we have had. So we're trying, you know, schools got them separated. I told her, you I are said, setting your son up for I told a real her, I said, one problem. day at their house, I'm calling the cops. Statutory rapes are being charged. I already we, met with my lawyer. No, I don't want to go. do that to a kid and ruin his life. Well, I met with my lawyer to make sure. So when I do I act on this, I want to make sure that the 17-year-old was right. When she does get along with him, the lawyer said, yep. let's go. But we, it's just a matter of timing right now. Yes, it's been very, So we're just very waiting hard. patiently. If you really do have a lawyer you're talking to, yes. file that lawsuit now so that there's a court order so that you don't have to rely on anybody else but that judge to see to it that they don't interfere with your efforts to regain control over your wayward 14-year-old daughter. Yes, That's ma correct, ma'am. But do it. Don't wait any longer. I've, I no, tried to done. get order of protections, but because we're not related and she's a minor, they wouldn't give them to me. You're I don't right. understand. She's a minor, and that's why it should be granted. That's what I don't understand. They, but if you can't get it that way, then go into court for it. Okay. Now, what is this iPhone 6 Plus, Ugg boots, and sweater? Well, Those are the things she ran away with that Friday morning, never to be seen again which was reported to the CPS worker. Melinda had it. And then I have a message from the detective saying the dad says they don't have it, but I've never seen any How of the How do you property. know Belinda had it with that phrase um, you said? My CPS worker said I can try to get you the- That's not the same as knowing Belinda had it. Do you have something from the CPS worker saying that? That's the thing she couldn't release. She can't give, she can't give us that. The case. I don't understand why not. Because you guys ended up taking open. time off for, lost from work. You're suffering for pain and suffering for, according to you, a false claim with CPS and harassment. Right. Let me hear from you guys on the falsity of the CPS claim. Did you call that in? No. The, when she went to the hospital on the day, she cho Claudia chose on the day she was found to go to the hospital, the social worker at the, the hospital contacted CPS. We didn't contact them. I haven't contacted them. I haven't made any false reports. Let the me see, you have it. some text between uh, your son and your daughter, correct? Is there something this, funny to you? No, Your Honor, I just wanted okay, to show you Okay, because you keep breaking picture, into smile, and I'm trying to understand why you keep breaking into I just smile. I it's something that's utterly heartbreaking, and it, you're doing it, it now, too. I agree, but it's what yeah. they're saying. It's making me smile because There's it's nothing funny. funny about what they're saying. They're lying. That that's lying shouldn't make you smile. Okay. Under I, no circumstances should there be a smile on your face. I apologize, Your Honor. Let's talk about the text between the kids. Um, oh. Sorry. Right. Apologize. Who's talking to who in these texts? Jay, it's Jay. Tyler and Claudia, my daughter and, their, and son. their son. I'm telling you, that blank is definitely the moves I'm trying to torture her with you. That'd yes, be the literal so funniest true. blank if she saw us pull up as torturers. I could imagine her being so scared knowing we're about to blank her up. I don't care. I'll go with you if I have to. I just don't want to leave your arms again. I hate waiting when it comes to you. I lose way too much patience and get way moody. I wish we didn't have to wait, knowing we both want to see each other so much. She responds, I just miss you. I can't wait to just hold your face and kiss you until I can't breathe anymore. He responds, if only, with how crazy we both feel. Like we could only give Christina, that's you, yes, the worst of the worst and nobody else could. I know you hate her. I hate her even more. She's the problem to everything. I wish she would just drop dead. Your Honor, this is the message. Maybe a few months from now we can make it seem like we drift apart or something. So if I ever run away again, they won't question you. Believe me, I hate her enough to know. I hate her enough. I know you have to despise this thing. Dropping dead ain't even enough for her, though she needs torture. So she wishes death. Torture her so bad her body is irreparable. Keep her alive so she's even more mentally unstable and kill her off as she lived her paranoid filled life. If you could do that and not go to jail, you know I'd let you baby. Christina deserves the worst of the worst. Blah, blah, blah. You give me the best always since day one. You sacrificed so much for me. I hope she gets more than fired. Let me see her on fire. I want to hear her screams out for help as her flesh burns and sticks to her ugly face. 
Now let me ask you, sir, as a therapist for youth, yes, are you perhaps thinking now that having her around your son may not be the best thing? It's not the, unhealth it's not the healthiest thing, no. Your Honor. Because if this is what she's writing your son, and your son's in love, I never saw maybe that. that you had never heard this. I you? never saw that. Exactly. Why is it? How do you know this isn't going to be just another one of those cases? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind, both of you. You think you have the facts to make decisions that are so weighty and that will have such effect on people's lives, including your own son, and you don't have the facts. Year old. You guys need to run, not walk, to a civil courthouse to file a complaint for their ear interference in your parental rights. You need to talk to your lawyer about it and you need to do it today so that it can get in front of a judge who will then order them not to have anything to do with your daughter. Quite frankly, I don't know how you can continue to work on this with two adults who have the right. hubris to think they know better and to continue to go against what you want as parents and what everyone is working towards in unification here. All yes. of the professionals, all of the cops, all of the probation officers, all of, all of the therapists, everyone's working towards a goal that they are stopping yeah. you from achieving. Yeah. So stop being a victim. Go to court and file a lawsuit to get the order that you want. You understand? Yes, in the meantime, I'm going to rule on what's in front of me here. You have a counterclaim for $2,000 against them for harassment. What's that about? About them um, threatening to kill me, my son. When? When he's looking for his daughter and she's no, there? No, after she was found to threaten to kill me, my kids, okay. and my But dad. after that, you continue to have her over and she's welcome there whenever you want because according to because you, it's perfectly the judge, legal. The and then he would go there. said it was okay. They right, so he everything. would go there and they he would. They know everything at Upstate. Yeah, they so know that how is his dealers? presence there? is to kill you as opposed to to get his oh, daughter, which is what they keep and doing. Buy me a beer? What do no, I think? How, did you hear my question? All these threats. Did you hear my question? Did you hear my question? Why are you deducing that his presence in front of your house would be to kill you as opposed to to get his daughter from you, his 14-year-old daughter. She was already returned. I'm not talking about the big hiding incident oh, with okay. helicopters. I'm talking about after that. After that, the probation officer went to your house and she was there and you both face looked me in the face and she's welcome there anytime. It's perfectly legal and I'm gonna keep welcoming, wel welcoming her there. That's what the judge said. Us. I'm not going against the judge's order. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. I'm talking about. I don't think I'm you do. I'm talking about real I judges. I think I'm talking to a freaking wall. That's what's happening here. I keep talking and nothing's going in your thick head. That's because you're, you're so busy God, trying to be right that you don't understand the position. Get out of my courtroom. Okay. I've had enough with your laughing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. Listen to me. That. I need everybody to listen to me because our contact here is going to be over. Okay. But you guys have to go back to your children who don't listen. And I don't mean to, I know that, I, I that when you have a child who has become ungovernable, that people get through this, that child will grow. That child one day is going to be a woman, a mother. She's going to have a job. And if there's a God, she's gonna have her own children, right? Hopefully. And then her children will give her some trouble. <laughs> and that's the day she'll look back at the two of you and beg forgiveness. And, you know, it's just, this isn't gonna I last. So. But no. you don't, you know, while you're working on this so hard, the last thing you need are two unrepentant, smug other parents interfering. So, I don't really care about an iPhone. I don't really care about Ugg boots. I don't really care about a sweater. I care about lost wages because they hid your child. And when you sue for the rest of that money for pain and suffering for making a false claim, I don't know whether they're the ones who made that false claim, but I sure as heck know they're the ones who had that child in their house and have caused you a great deal of pain and suffering. Mm. So I am ordering Mr. and Mrs. McManus to pay you the $5,000 cap that you are asking for in this courtroom. But again, it's not going to stop until you get that court order. On your counterclaim against them for $2,000, here's a shocker. No. I, I wish you the best of do. luck. Don't give up on her. We no, won't. Man. Because if she feels, no, but I'm really, you know what? I'm actually talking to you right I now. I never will. I know. 
You're, mm. You are her mother. There is no other I mom. am her mother. That lady isn't her mother. The lady who walked out isn't her mother. You are her mother. And she needs to feel like you're going to keep fighting. Okay? I will. You have to, you have to shine as a mother. Okay. Thank Good you, luck. Your Honor. Well, in a riveting case, the plaintiff has prevailed. They're going to get the $5,000. Miss McManus, you just got leveled by the judge, too. What are you thinking right now? I have no comment right now. Pardon? No comment right now. No comment at all? No. Thank you, though. You know, you lost the case big time. I know. And it's not over. I know. You have more legal I know. issues facing you in court. You could go to jail. I know. It's possible. I guess the question is, have you learned anything from all of this? You, you keep not, allowing her into your not, home. I didn't allow her in my home. My husband did. I'm not home. But I should steal my ground and not have her in my house anymore. You know, I hope you've learned something from this experience. Because, you know, in real other court, it could be worse. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. All right. All right, Mr. and Ms. Vasquez. This is really a rough, yeah. rough situation. No, I'm yeah. just happy. I want to thank the judge for, you know, letting the truth come out and seeing them for what they really are, you know, jerks. You know, oh. as parents, we have to work together. Our life was perfectly fine before this. We were a happy family, and we're going to continue to well, be Well, let's hope you can family. get there yeah. somehow, some way. We will. We'll Good be luck fine. to you. Just got to get rid of them. Okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. All thank right? you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Okay. Wow, Harvey. Okay, just so you know, Doug, they got money actually for emotional distress. They had said they were suing for pain and suffering. Just so you know, pain and suffering usually requires some kind of a physical injury that attaches to it. That's not the case here, but it is outrageous conduct, and therefore you get money for emotional distress. This is the plaintiff, Taya Stryker. She says she met the defendant online and they knew each other for about three weeks when he stole her life savings. That's right, she left him alone in her house to grab some food and when she returned, he was gone. And so was her $2,700 in cash. The cops questioned the defendant. He forked over 1,300 bucks of her money. She still owed 1,400 and is suing for just that today. This is the defendant, Eric Mitchell. He says he met the plaintiff on Tinder. And when he explained his financial situation to her, she helped him out and gave him $1,800 so he could pay his child support. Later that day, the plaintiff had second thoughts about giving him the money and called the cops on him, claiming he stole the money. This woman's a liar. He stole nothing from her and owes nothing. He's accused of theft. All parties, please use your right hand. You see it, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, All right. Uh, Tara Stryker? Taya Stryker. Taya Stryker. Yes. And who's the, the person with you? My mother. All right. Um, how old are you? 20. Eric Mitchell, how'd you meet him? Tinder. Met him on Tinder, and then you were dating him for. Uh, we were. Do we talking. call it dating or not really? I wouldn't call it dating. I, okay. I would call it just seeing each other for seeing about each other. two weeks beforehand. For two weeks, did yeah. you actually go out to restaurants and movies and uh, dates, or just basically? No, kind of just hung out at home, just okay. did our own thing. And so one fine day in September 29 of 2019, what okay. happened? So um, I told him that I want to go out and get food, and he told me that he wanted to just hang back and nap. Didn't sound like it was uh, any type of off to me at the time and everything, so went on to go get food by myself, left him in my room. And beforehand, he had seen where I kept my cash and everything like that because I had just kept thousands of dollars um, that I had worked for and everything like that since I was 16 years old. Okay, can I ask you a question? Because yeah. um, inquiring minds want to know. How old did you say you were? I'm 20 years old now. Okay, so you've been saving this money for four years. Yeah. And so what you I've do is counted in front of a guy you met in Tinder three weeks ago. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I know. I know, I'm aware. <laughs> if I was your mother, I wouldn't be laughing. I know. We've I don't know what. through this. Yes. Yeah, I know. But I mean, that's like really ridiculous. You're, I know. You know, you're out no. on your own and you can't. I'm aware. Put Definitely. your right foot in front of your left foot and, yeah. you know, do some math and figure out that that's not the best idea. That day as well, I had taken money out of the bank and was putting it where I. In front of him. Kept him. Yeah. 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 Good, good move. So then you leave and what happens? Um, I leave. I come back. He's gone. Money's gone. How much I money was it. gone? 
Um, it was exactly $2,700. How do you know? Because we had counted it earlier that day. Well, who's we? Me and him. Why'd you count it with him? Because I wanted to see how much money I'd had and I didn't want to. So it it's myself. worse than that. It's not that you yeah. left the guy you met on Tinder alone in your room and he searched it. It's not that you left the guy you met on Tinder alone in a room and he saw you maneuvering towards it. It's that you literally put a bunch of arrows on mm -hmm. the money and, I'm and said, here, let's count my is. money. Let's count I'm my money. I'm aware of how bad it looks and everything like that, but I just didn't expect the, the worst. <laughs> Why? Because you knew him all of three weeks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. I what know. are you laughing at? <laughs> Did you take our money? I'm not gonna lie, like, like we were talking about the whole like money situation and like, you know, like I need to pay child support and like my fines and stuff. And like, she was gonna help what me. What fines? Like I have a lot of like court fines and stuff. For what? Like, uh, I still have like this credit card fraud charge. Mm. So like I'm going through that still. Mm. And, well, you're like, not going through that. You owe that. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's doing something terrible to you. All right, so you have a credit card fraud charge of how much? Meaning you're paying it slowly? Yeah. How much is the total? The total is probably like around like 3,000, 4,000. Okay, and who did you defraud for the 3,000 and 4,000? Girl you met on Tinder? No, I-, I <laughs> Who's the victim in that case? I don't even know. I just found a card on the floor and used it. Mm. I can see you vetted him very well. <laughs> All right, so you are not going to lie. That was the first thing you announced to me. And then you, uh, you, you are going through all of your problems with her and what? Like, basically, like, she was, like, saying, like, she'll help me and stuff. And then, like, when I did have, like, when she left to go to work that morning, like, she didn't go anywhere else but to work. I know where she went. She went to work. You know, she left me in the house. And, like, I told her I was going to I was going to use the money. And I, I left the house. Wait, wait. You told her? Yeah. Who do you think you are? I, it's not like I told her, like, oh, Well, that's what you just get... said. What no, did you I'm mean sorry. to say? I'm, I'm sorry. It's just like, like, I was telling her about, like, my situation. And? and? you know, like, we were connecting and stuff like that. And basically, like, she was saying, like, I'll not give... Not basically. You... What did she say that I'll led get... you to believe that you could take the money? She said, I'll give you money to help you. Okay. And then basically, like, when I left, I didn't take all of the money, like I only took like what, like she gave me. What, did, wait, you, you didn't tell me she gave you money. You told me that she said to you, I'll give you money to help you. And then she left and then you grabbed money. Did she hand you money? No. Oh, so you took the money that was in there. Yeah, after Did you leave knowledge, anything or you just took it all? I didn't take it all. I, whatever I took, I gave to the police. You know, like when the police came to How my house. How much did you take? I guess it was like seventeen, eighteen hundred. How do you guess? You didn't count it. I didn't count it. I literally. So took you it just away. grabbed everything, and then how long after you? Why did you leave her house? Because I had to go do stuff. Like I had to, I had to leave. Okay, so she tries to reach you. Do you try to reach him before you call the police? Yes, definitely. And what? Ha I was in communication with. What her. does that mean? Do you have texts? I have texts. Yes. May I see that your phone and the text from? Okay. Hand it to my bailiff. Is it up? The yeah, it's right, right here. So um, I went to the cops, I want to say, at 11 o'clock that night. And wh so what is go like, like when? You hold on, hold on. It just starts with XO. Please don't do this to me, giving you one more chance. That's when I had realized that he was gone and everything. OK, like that. but the I very first thing you say is, hey, don't do this to me. Yeah. How's he going to know what you're saying if you're wrong? Like, how I knew he had just ran off with the money. Right. Because you come home and the money's gone. Yeah. Why did you even look for the money? Because I saw that the money was gone. Oh, wait, how did you see the money was gone? Because I had it in a corner of my room in, in a little container, and it was opened and just empty. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't do this to me. Giving you one more chance. This is at 631. Why giving you one more chance? What other chance had you Because I was calling him. I was debating going to the cops right then Okay, and so were you leaving him messages? I was were you talking to him? She was uh, talking to me. So you were talking on the phone, and what was it you were saying, and what was it he was saying? Um... He just kept saying that he would be back with it, that he was coming back, just everything that the text messages say, that he was gonna come back even later with it. I'm in southbound at, at Brandon, and you say, where the is all my money? And he says, Taya, please, I have to pay a fine for gun charge, or was gonna go to jail for a long time. Please, Taya, I will give it all back, I promise. I swear on everything I love. 
I wouldn't do you like that. I want to make babies with you, babes. <laughs> please, babes. I honestly do love you a lot. Where are you? Babe, please call me now. I need you to call me. I will, babe, but I know you're going to spaz. My mom just called me too, saying you're spazzed. You had his mom's phone number? I went to his mother's house. You knew his where his house. mother lived? Yeah. Okay. And what I did was, you tell his mother? Um, I told his mother that he just ran off with my life savings. Okay. Did you tell her how much? Yeah. How much did you tell her? $2,700. She said $1,700 to my mom. Is your mom here? No. Okay. You need to call me right now. You got me going on a wild goose chase for you, almost killing myself trying to find you. Taya, please, baby, please. I really love you. Please. Has that worked on someone else? Has that ever worked on anyone? Taya, please, baby, please. I really love you. Please don't kill yourself. I'm literally going to off myself if you don't call or tell me where you are right now. Why are you doing that at 7.03? You're trying to find him and get your money? Yes. Okay. Please don't, Taya. Don't do that, please. You just took everything I ever worked for, even after I told you how it happened before. Oh, this isn't your first time? Um, I had a situation with another ex. Yeah, what was it? Tell us all about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, then that situation, he wanted to borrow some money and stuff like that that I had handed to him. That other boyfriend? It to him. Yeah. You had handed him the money? Yeah. And did that boyfriend pay you back? No. And how much money was that? $500. Okay. Taya, please, I will always be by your side through everything. I swear to God. I probably, just not when I'm absconded with $2,700. <laughs> I actually am interested in you. I was scared of saying something. Oh, that doesn't sound like she gave you the money, does it? She says, call me right now then. If you care about me, all I need to do is talk to you right now. I can't believe you did this to me. To which you respond, I'm in the car and the music is blasting. I'm not lying at all, Taya. I, where do you see the way I look at you? Like I really interested a lot in you. Sorry. How impressed are you with yourself? You Sorry. just took almost $3,000 from me. Please, you can't do this. I can't do this. To which you don't say, 3,000? Why, it was only 1,800. <laughs> Babes, I'll be at your house tomorrow. No, I need you back here now. I can come back later, babe. I can't come now. I'm far. Yeah, it's inconvenient for me to come back and return the money I stole. <laughs> How is it 7 o'clock and you haven't called the police yet? All right, so I was giving him a chance to come back and everything, and I was to and from his house with hey, his listen mother. listen to me. Listen to me. You are talking like a 12-year-old, mm -hmm. not a woman who's alone on her own, mm -hmm. who's saved up an, you know, a, a sizable amount of money. All right? Mm -hmm. Don't be stupid. Yeah, I know that now. No, but you should have known that already. I know. You shouldn't have been counting money in front of a guy you knew a few weeks. I'm aware. Are you? Because yeah. your money should be in a bank. Yeah, it is now. Trust oh, me. Oh, okay. <laughs> How am I supposed to trust you? You always did. I need you to come back with my money. I need it back. I cannot help you like this. You didn't even tell me about your gun charge, and you used me to help fix it? Oh, gun charge? Oh, tell me about the gun charge. That was just a, a thing that I just said to her. Like, I just said it to her. Oh, you don't really have a gun charge? No. You have the credit card credit fraud card charge? Credit card fraud, yeah. So why would you say gun charge? Because you didn't want to say, please, please, I have a credit card fraud charge? She already knew about, like, everything. Well, then why did you make up a second gun just, a second just, charge? Uh, it's a gun charge. I just said it. I don't know. I do care about you. I will. I do everything in my power to help you. I love you, girl. I need you to come back right now. Later, babe. I can't right now. Oh, my gosh. Seriously, I apologize. I can't believe you did this to me after everything I told you. I told you I needed it, babes. I'm sorry. I'll sell my soul to you. I'll hit you back in a few, okay? You better be back. I really cannot believe you did this. I promise, I promise. This is my worst fear, and you did it. Uh, you know, there's no reason for you to be afraid of this. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of us aren't afraid that's going to happen. Oh, you yeah. know why? Because we don't count $3,000 in front of a guy we met on Tinder three weeks ago and leave him alone with our $3,000 that we just counted in a cookie jar. <laughs> no need to be afraid of it. You just need to have all those brain cells in your head hold hands. Okay? <laughs> Why are you guys communicating on September 30th? Like, can we please meet up between 2.30 and 5 tomorrow so I can not get fired from work? Why would you get fired? So, um, he'd returned half the money in front of the police Oh, let's talk about that. Yeah. All right. So that night, according to you... At what time do you involve the police? I involve the police around 11 o'clock. My police reports for like 11, I want to say 30. Okay. And let's see the police report. Did the police go to his house? 
Um, not that night, no, because it was like 12 o'clock and I had a police officer who didn't really, kind of just nodded me off, really. I talked to the head of detectives the next day. What's your defense again? I didn't take her money. Like, I gave whatever I took from to the police, you know what I mean? Like, well, whatever I had. Get, how did the police catch up with you? They came to my house. Oh, and just knocked on the door? Yeah, they were saying, like, uh, Taya said that you stole her money from her house. And I said I did not steal it. She gave it to me and I left. Yeah, but and you know that's not true because we, we just read the text together. So you're a liar and you lied to the police about that because I just read you your texts, right? Didn't I just do that? Yeah, but I never said that I, like, I stole her. Like, I never even told her I stole your money. You know what I mean? Well, you don't need to say you stole your money. You need to be caught at stealing her money, at which your text clearly but reflect she, that she never gave you the money. So she, that means you went did. to the cookie jar, grabbed it, and took it. She did know, you know? She didn't know what, that you were a piece of garbage? No, that I had the money. Of course she knew you had the money. I'm yeah. saying she already knew what I was gonna use it for and then when she finally realized like her mom was gonna start tweaking, that's when she was like, I'm sorry, like that's my lingo. But like, um, like when she finally realized like her mom was gonna start bugging on her about like her, the money and stuff. Like the that's when she I can see that she's freaking out the minute she came home and saw what you did. And she's begging you to find it within your heart to not be a jerk. And you're saying ridiculous things to her, like, I want to make babies with you. Like, that's going to brush her off. Do you know how insulting that is? How, what a big opinion you have to have of yourself to think that that's going to shut her up. And you, you know why you thought that? Because you acted like a bimbo. And it has nothing to do with Tinder. You were acting like a dummy. Okay? Yeah. I'm not talking about how you meet guys or what you choose to do. You be you, girl. Okay? But... Be you with connected brain cells, mm -hmm. okay? You don't mm -hmm. count money in front of some guy you knew two weeks. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? <laughs> How much money did you get back? I got back 1,300 and I'm still owed 1,400. According to you, you talked to him about a payment plan. Was that yeah. on the phone or by text? That was on the phone and everything like that. That's not okay. written down anywhere. Like when I brought the money back to the police, that's when they said like about the Brought payment. the money back to the police. I thought you said the police were there and you handed them everything you had. Yeah, that's when, yeah, I had to go do it in, like in the police department. Why well, thought the police were at your house? They were. They said like you got to come down to the police department right now. Did you bring the money with you? Yeah. How much was your uh, payment that you had to make on the gun charge or on the credit card fraud or whatever the heck else you got going on? I don't How know. many times have you been convicted? Probably like three times. Mm. What were the others? Um, burglary and breaking and entry. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, of course you didn't know that yeah. because <laughs> there is none so blind as she who will not see. You see? Because unless you run a criminal records check on a guy, mm -hmm. then you are just assuming that everything's hunky dory, aren't you? Mm -hmm. She knows that though from like where I live at and like how oh, wait, I I'm sorry, stuff like how that. dare you? She does know how that. dare you suggest that where you live means you're gonna be a criminal? How dare you it's not insult the people criminal, of your community like, in that fashion? At three fifty one on the day that he's that the police have already taken him or he, they've made him come. Did they arrest him for this or no? No, because I decided not to press charges. At 3.51, you text him, hey, with a little Tinkerbell. Yeah. And he says, hey, babes, can we meet up between 2.30 and 5 tomorrow so I can not get fired from work, LOL? What do you mean by that? Um, I wanted to meet up with him. Um, anything after that was just trying to... Did you go over there? I think I did, yeah. What'd you do? I was trying to talk to him. And do what? Get back together? No, I was trying to talk to him about... The money. We had sex. How long after that did you continue to have a relationship? Last that, time was probably like two months ago or a month ago. When, when this I is October when I'm reading this stuff. Yeah, October. That's when I was like giving her weed and stuff. Tell me about the for weed. For the payments. Like for the payments and stuff, like I didn't really have the money. So like I, well, I smoke a lot of wait, weed. Wait, wait, what weed. payments? If according to you, if according to you, you gave back all the money, why would there be payments? Because, like, I was in front of the police and they were saying, like, she kept on threatening me, saying, like, she was going to go back to the police. So I was I'm like, sorry, right. go back. To, I'm sorry. If if you gave back all of the money, there would be no payments. Exactly. Right. So why are but you paying how, her that's with how weed? I was thinking of it. But I'm like, I right. like she's still tripping. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm going to have to just, like, satisfy her. Like, OK, fine. Like, I'm going to just give you weed and like that. Like, I've been giving her weed every every time she hit me up. Like, these screenshots Can I put right in here? that he was still making me pay for it? <laughs> oh. 
That's yeah. what you wanted to put in? <laughs> <laughs> he was still making me pay for it. Okay. Yeah. Why were you buying weed from a guy who ripped you off? What is he wrong with said, you? He said, all right, so like, he said that he would get in trouble if I didn't pay him and stuff like that. And Wait, I knew, no, like, why are you buying, why are you having anything else to do with him? I know, I'm aware. Because like, I was also trying to get a well, I don't think so. Line. I think you're saying that because America's watching you. Mm-hmm. I, I was think, trying to keep up a communication line. I don't along think with that. I think you're money. saying that now because your mother's in the room and America's what I, I, I'm still aghast that your mom is smiling. But I don't think that you really were trying to. I think that you need to look deep within your soul and figure out why you don't like you, why you don't think you're worth more, why you don't think you are worthy of loyalty and a good person who isn't snowing you. Why? What happened in your life that would make you think that you, the only way you can keep a man is if you do these things that you're doing? It's crazy, girl. It's crazy. So you've got to fix you. Forget about all this other stuff. And you've got to fix you because you're too young to have no confidence, too young and too pretty to have no confidence like this. I say so. No. <laughs> Did he ever pay you anything? He paid me thirteen hundred dollars in front of the cops of what the money that I assumed right. he Did had he ever left. Pay, I meant, did he ever pay you anything after that? Oh, the payment plans didn't work out. No. Why you thought the payment plans would work out any more than the relationship is beyond me? You also introduced into evidence some pictures. Where did these come from? Okay. Who's that? That's him in my bedroom with uh, the money that he was playing with like a toy. That you let him play with like a toy? Yeah. But um, as I'd mentioned Is that before, him again? Yeah. Where did this money come from? My friend in the back. What, what are you doing? I'm just, I just flex. That's it. Can I put a just for Instagram. comment in? When I first met Eric, he was carrying around cash wads of fake hundred dollar bills just okay, to flash in pictures. Okay, he's your dope supplier. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So how do you know they're fake? Maybe they're real. Oh, no, they were fake. They had Chinese pink lettering on them. Yeah, okay. I showed, I showed her a Okay, st- just stop. Everybody stop. I find that you owe her the remaining $1,400. I find that you are a liar and a thief, and I am ordering you to pay her back $1,400. I got to tell you, it kills me because what I would like to do is find you $1,400 for stupidity, but I can't because all I've got to do is look at this and say, Where did that money belong? And the money belongs with you. But I cannot tell you enough times or in enough ways that he's just a thief and a taker. I'm I'm not worried about him. He'll just take what he wants. He'll burglarize houses. He'll cheat with credit cards. He'll steal people's credit cards. He'll steal your money. If you want any hope for you, you've got to make sure that you figure out who you're going to date and trust. Got it? Good luck to you. Thank you, man. Verdict for the plaintiff. So the defendant has been ordered to give back the money to the plaintiff. What do, you, what do you think about what the judge just had to say to you and what just went on? I don't know, man. I, I mean, was she giving. Wasn't very, yeah. she, she ain't she ain't really. She wasn't on my side, but it's all right, though. You feel me? Because I know she, she's still going to hit me up, you know? So we still going to be friends, you know? I'm you just trying. So? Yeah. I'm just trying to do better on myself because she just made I mean, me. You really took advantage of her. All right. Anyway, oh, thank yeah. you very much. You're on the way, okay? Thank uh, you. Thank you. You owe her the money and you'll have to get it. Miss Stryker? Hello. How are you? Good. What do you think about what the judge just told you? You got a real lecture from the judge. I uh, did. I'm going to take it all to heart. And I know you live and you learn with these kind of situations like that. I've taken that in. I've done that with this situation and everything. I will have no communication further um, along this. And I'm with happy him. with the outcome. With oh, him. yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you something. Seriously. You sat here through this whole case like you're watching a television sitcom, <laughs> laughing, smiling, What's the matter with you? I thought he was such a nice guy. You know, I just didn't think that it was going to go this way. And this was her little walk on the wild side that I think is behind her now, right? Why why were you laughing in the courtroom? Nerves. What's funny? It's nerves. And I'm glad that this is over. It's happiness that this is over. 
we're through with our little walk on the wild side. You're a pair, side. the two of you. Seriously. Yes. This is not good. Okay. <laughs> we're trying. Okay, no. There's nothing to laugh about, my dear. Thank nothing you. to laugh about. The last time. I don't know, Harvey. What do you think? I mean, look, you know, dating apps are fine, but come on. I mean, showing your finances three weeks in, get real. This is the plaintiff, Shanti Jones. She says she hired the defendant to give her an asymmetrical style bob with two streaks in the front of her head for her big upcoming birthday celebration. Well, as she was sewing the weave into her hair, she could feel the needles going into her scalp. The defendant also burned her with a hot comb. Bottom line, the woman injured her. The bob was not asymmetrical because one side was too short and she looked horrible at her birthday. She's suing for $1,084.84 for all she's now out. This is the defendant Yvette. She says she installed the weave on the woman's hair. She asked her if she liked it. The plaintiff said yes, paid for it, and left. The woman then bashed her on social media. She tried to ruin her good reputation, and she even had people threaten her. Well, she doesn't know this cyber bully a thing. And if anyone's owed money today, it's not the plaintiff. She's accused of being short with a customer. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,084.84 for humiliation and bullying on the internet. All parties, please get your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Jones, you are suing Evett for $1,084.84 that you say she owes you for ruining um, your hairdo for your birthday and thereby ruining your birthday. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what happened. So um, I heard about the defendant actually through um, um, one of my good friends. She did her hair for a concert. And then I was like, okay, I like her, you know. So I went on her page and she had a lot of followers and she was known in the city. What's a lot of followers for something like this? She got like 50,000 followers. Oh, doesn't that mean you buy some? Because you can't possibly have 50,000 clients. No, I did not buy any. I, I don't know if it's, but. Why do they follow you? Do you do tutorials on there or something? Do you do something? I'm just a popular in my city. Um, so what do, you, what do you, what is it? If I were to follow you, what would I see by following I you? I guess because I'm pretty. I know how to dress. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people who are pretty and know and how to hair. dress. But do you have pictures of your hair, of the hair you do? And yes. maybe they want. Yeah, she has pictures of her to hair. To have and examples. Looks, for, she, okay. she makes wigs. She sells hair. And, and the, hair, her, the hair on her page looks pretty good. But okay. you know, when you post on your page, you're going to make sure it is tight. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I ended up messaging her on July 17th about doing, doing me an asymmetrical bob. And I sent, sent her the pictures of what I wanted. Asymmetrical bob means? So it means one so side bob, is longer than and the then other. one side longer yes, than the other. Because it was something different. You know, I never had that before. And I like today. It was my um, birthday. So I said, I'm going to do something different. So uh, she ended up saying, okay, she could do it. And then the 18th, I ended up Did making Did you my, send her a picture of how you wanted it? Yes, ma'am. I sent her, I sent her pictures of my actual, um, of like different styles that had that. So I, I sent her a picture of asymmetrical bob. So... We get to the appointment, you know. Uh, she was nice. I came in. Everything was nice. She was playing gospel music. I was like, yes. Gospel music. I was so like, yes. You were like into I like it. All that. Okay. You know, all right. thank you, Jesus, you know, got me in the mood. Okay. So uh, I'm sitting there, you know, she's doing my hair, you know, and she's kind of sticking me with the pins. As she's Did you tell her out. ouch? No, I didn't say ouch. Because I was oh, just I'd say, like. I'd say ouch. I should have okay. said ouch, she are But I'm like, you know, sometimes. I know beauty is pain, but I never felt that pain before. I don't, I I don't see men going before. through that kind of pain. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't see them wearing high heels right, and painting their faces right. up. I, I'm getting a little sick and tired of the whole okay. beauty is pain thing. Go on. <laughs> so you're on. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it is what it is. Let's just go ahead and get this done. And I just. In the back of my mind, I'm the whole time like she is known. She just did my friend hair. She got to be good. I know she good. I just know it. I know it. Shanti, you know she good. Okay. So, so I'm what her, happens? Like, Tell me what happens. So then she um she sews the hair in my head. So then the problem comes when she turns me around so she can cut my bob. And judge, no lie, all I heard was, and I'm like. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So then I'm like, nah, nah, I can't be, can't be. So she turns me can't around. Can't be, can't be what? Can't be, can't be that she cut my hair that short. Oh, okay. So she turns me back around to look in the mirror and like, I know she looking at me. I'm looking at her in the mirror. She was like, I think I cut it too short. I'm like, yeah, you, you cut it too short. All right. Do you so, have pictures of yes, how short Yes, I she actually cut? do. And it was because okay. I took on my birthday, but I never posted them. So I have them on my Would phone Would that right be now. it? I have Yeah, right. this is about short. And I also have a picture of how it correlates with the other side, if you want to see that on my phone. You have it up? Yes, ma'am. I have it up. Okay. You can see on my birthday picture how um, it wasn't supposed to be cut that short. Okay. And... Yeah. 
So that's shorter than than what it was. <laughs> it's a great picture, but that's, Thank that's you. shorter than you wanted it. Yeah, that's way shorter than what it was supposed to be. Right. So what happens when you so tell after, her? Yeah, that's a lot shorter. What did she shorter. say? She was like, "Okay, I'm gonna take some money off, you know, off of the style because." So you know, what did she take could, off? She took twenty five dollars off. So at that point, she did say, "I'm gonna say that she did say." So is everything okay? So I'm looking at my hair, you know, I just look in the mirror quick, you know, just like this right here. And you say, "Yes, it's and okay." I was like, then yes, you get okay. home that night, and then you realize. Uh, that in your that you start to feel like there are more and more problems. Mm-hmm. What are the problems that you started to feel you noticed that night? Yeah. So at, so so during that day, I actually look and I'm pulling my. You know how you want to just do a little behind yeah. your ear. My cap is sticking out, and that's what you can see right there. My cap is sticking out, and then I'm like, hold up, my cap sticking out. I don't think this is right. So then when I look, I pull up my bang. I'm trying to do my bang too. I pull up my bang. My edges are out, and Judge, I got edges. You can braid my edges in my in my during during the braid. Now that's What's my edges sticking of, out. This is a picture taken when this picture taken. That was um two days later, and my I was actually at a restaurant at that time, and my friends were like, "Shanti, look at your hair," and I'm like, "Yeah, y'all, I've been trying to deal with it, you know." I just so you sent her do. a text that night. Right? No, you, I didn't send her. I didn't send her a DM that day. When did you do it? I sent her a DM when I took those pictures. That was um two, two days, days later. Yeah. All right. Do you, can you bring up in your phone the text that you sent her? Yeah. Okay. So she comes in to do this job, and she does show you a picture of how she wants it done. Yes. And in fact, she says that she wanted the long side past her shoulder. Yes. Okay, so you know you cut it too short. What happened? Yeah. How did that happen? So I just made a mistake. As pretty and popular as you are, how did that happen? I just made a mistake. Like, everyone makes a mistake. So by making my mistake, I offered the money off. When so she- what is your defense? That she sat there and said everything's fine? Okay, so the problem that I have is she contacted me uh, a day later or so and told me that it was an issue, but I asked her before she left the salon was everything okay? She said everything was okay. Then she said once she got in the car, she noticed things. So I said, why didn't you come back in the shop so it could have been fixed? She said she didn't have time, this and that. So I I did offer a free install. She didn't take the free install. She wanted to go to social media and bash me on social media. People were threatening me and my DMs. I have the um, So this turned into a whole big yes, social media it turned into a whole big thing when it didn't have to be. All right. So somebody posts on your Facebook page after you complained about her. Mm-hmm. You know where she stays. You go give her a $175 blank whooping, <laughs> period. Now I don't know what right, how does she control? How is that something that, I mean, when you, okay, so you say that person is threatening you. That person is smack talking to her on her Facebook page, but you saw it. That's what you mean. Right. Yes. Did anybody actually threaten you? I have personal ones that were sent to my direct Instagram. Right. That were They're threats? also there, too. I mean, it's that like threats, bullying. Yes or no. I, I guess, listen. I just okay. listen. You, you're, you're suing for cyberbullying. And I'm not going to read through a bunch of stuff. Show me. Are they highlighted what you're meant? No, but it's just right there. It's no, just it's one not message. just right there. Circle with a pen the threat so I can determine if it's a threat. Because here's what I don't do. I don't allow litigants to exaggerate and then call that evidence. I need to see the evidence of a threat. That some, I'd like to see that because okay. you're suing for cyberbullying. I want to see who bullied you. First, I want to see if anybody bullied you. Then I want to see if the person who bullied you is her. While she's looking for that, let's go back to you. I see the text that you, or the direct message. Yes, ma'am, DMs. Yes, ma'am. DM. Hey, sorry for the late message, but I had to let you know I'm very dissatisfied with my hair. Aside from the length, which I'm dealing with, I noticed more problems when I got in the car. My cap was left out. Some of the tracks aren't sewn down properly. I'm not trying to cause any problems, but for the price I paid, this is unacceptable. It is also my birthday weekend, and I had a photo shoot, and although my hair is passable, it isn't up to standards like it should have been for that price. I've tried to deal with it, but I couldn't anymore. I just wanted to know if I could get some compensation for my hair, whether it's more money off, a free install, fixing my hair, or some other form. Again, I'm not trying to be a problem. I just needed to express my concerns to you. That couldn't be more polite. Then she sends you the pictures that show that it's a real problem. And you say, hi, yes, I don't have a problem with giving you a free install. But when you said you noticed things once you got in the car, you should have come back in the shop so that it could have been fixed, not waited until a day later to say something. She answers to you, I was upset. I really didn't want to go back in. I advise that in the future you go back in okay. because that's just the better way to do it. Then everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks for that. We're all good. Okay, thanks for that. Free install. We've settled the case. We're all good. And then you send 
this. In reality, I wouldn't be wrong if I didn't redo your hair because for the simple fact that, and caps, I asked you before you left if there was anything wrong with your hair besides the mistake of me cutting it too short. Right then and there was your opportunity to speak up. How is that a good idea? Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So are most hair cutters competent? Uh, yeah, I believe so. You think they are? Yeah. Okay, so you go to a strange town, you go into a place, never met anybody, you go to a hair cutter. What are the chances, percentages, you're going to get a good haircut? I would say about 60%. 60%. That doesn't sound, that sounds high risk to me. What do you say? I think it's subjective, but overall, yes, you'd probably get a good haircut. So you would take your chances that yeah. way? Yeah. Man or woman? Who? For the hair cutter, would you pick? Or does it matter? Look at how they're dressed. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Going inside the courtroom. Why do you have to have the last word? Why, when you have it resolved from a customer, so you're a businesswoman now, right? So your decisions have to be not based on emotion and insult and ego and anger and all the other things that motivate all of us when we, you know, when we smack talk on text or DM. Can I say something? Oh, wait, but there's more. She sees that and she says, how much later is that? Oh, it's the next day in the afternoon when yes, she had, had a chance to, think to about stew. It. Girl, I had to think about it. Sit I and stew. No, you didn't just think about it. You reread all this stuff. Yeah. Over I, yeah. and over and over. And each time you reread it, you got madder. And then your friends reread it. And then your friends all had an opinion. Mm -hmm. I says, why you don't do this? And what's her response? Wow. Okay. You know what? You're absolutely right. I should have come back into the salon to let you try to fix your mistakes. But as I already said, I had work later on. I was irritated. I had errands to run. You being a stylist, you should always double check and never let your clients leave your seat looking any kind of way. But I di digress. Also, you could say you don't have to redo my hair, although the ethical and moral thing to do would be to understand how you made a client feel on her birthday weekend. Now I'm perturbed and I'd rather you not do my hair. But like I said, I'm not trying to cause problems. So if you want to, you could either just give me half of my money back, 75 bucks on my cash app, here's my address, or you could just replace the hair that you cut wrong so I won't have to buy anymore and I can let someone else install it. Look at that. And then what do you respond back? What does she, do you know what you responded back to? I didn't to? say anything. Nothing, nothing? What does she do? <laughs> On her story, she puts, please don't send me no paragraphs. I'm simply not reading it. And she put a little kissy face. So I said, okay. Since you, I, my last message to her was, since you don't read paragraphs, please send my money back. That's it. Like D-A-S-S-I-T. That's it. Okay. And that was it. And then I had D-A-S-S-I-T. D-A-S-S-I-T. That's it. That's it. I couldn't be proper I've been spelling it wrong this whole time. I couldn't be proper. So do you see how everything digresses? Just as a businesswoman, do you see that? Because you're running a business, and if your business is doing this well, you know, you have to realize that. So what you tell me then, how does it get nasty? You were looking for something that you wanted to show me. Did you find what you were looking for? Well, I sent the messages. They're circled there. Okay. B Y U up that girl's head. That blank wasn't installed right. She should should have beat yo blank scamming blank long feet blank long feet <laughs> Zach long feet blank blank ho. All right. That's not funny. You won powdered donut. Michael Jackson looking blank. What is that? What does powdered donut mean? I don't know. I don't even know who what sent that. What does powdered that? donut mean? I don't know, Your Honor. What is? I don't Nobody know who know? sent that. Each okay. thing that was. No, I know you're not. Well, yeah. I, I know that it's not being if sent was, under your if name. It was in eh? my comments. I tried to delete all the bad ones, but it was a lot of bad ones, ma'am. So know. is all this on her Facebook page? This is from the social media post that she made. But in, I, I but know no, these are people. From yeah, her. but she can't control the world. Listen, this is everybody's problem. Everybody wants to be on Instagram and be an Instagram star and be on social media. And that, but you know what? Someone else read all the bad stuff. We don't want all the bad stuff on there. It always digresses to bad stuff. So she posted on social media and then. People 
respond and people are crazy. And so stuff goes up there. And but you can't blame her for that. And you can't get money out of her for that. So on your counterclaim <laughs> against her zero, what I'd like to talk about is her real claim against you, which involves two things. She wants you to recompense her because of the pictures I showed you, the money it'll cost, the money she paid for the install and the money for the extensions, which would be a total of $271.21. Okay, so the issue that I have with that is because I asked before she left if everything was okay. She said yes. Right then and there, she should have said, and then I gave her the $25 off as well. And then it shouldn't have been taken to social media because social media can't help you get Why your not? money Why not? That's back. how you built your business. I have 50,000 followers because I'm so pretty. You built your business that way. Why do you not have a thick enough skin? And it only went to social media because you didn't treat her right to begin with. Because you had to have the last word and you had to, you know, and then everything descended. There's a cost to that. And that is that you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You want all that, Poppy? You want your whole life out there? Yeah. People, some other people may not like what you did. No. You got to pay the lady back. I'm ordering you to pay her back the $271.21, the value of the hair extensions plus the money for the install. That's my verdict. Yeah. So the plaintiff prevails in this case. Miss Yvette, let me ask you, do you think you did the wrong thing by emailing her back some of those messages? No. How do you feel now about losing the case, though? I don't feel like I should have lost. I don't feel like it was fair. So you think you did everything right? <laughs> you did make I mean, a mistake. Yes, we you make mistakes. Yes, we make mistakes, but I don't feel like I was wrong. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Here comes Ms. Jones. You presented a good case. Oh, thank you. Yes, I tried. How, how do you feel now? Do you feel like you, you're the victor? I feel good. I just, I just want people to know that when in a business, you can't treat your clients any kind of way. We come in, we spend good money, we work hard, you know. Just have some professionalism. You're a business owner, I'm not trying to stop your hustle. Just have some professionalism in what you're doing. And then if I have a problem, that's the review. We're going to put it on social media to let others know that that happened to me so they won't, it won't happen to them. What about the party and everything during the birthday I mean, yeah, I had, a good, I had a good birthday party. You know, she ain't stopped nothing. You know, my friend did my hair over again. It's just that it was just like a little bump in the road. And that bump got soft thanks to Judge Million. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm glad you feel right. better. Okay. Yes, thank you. Have good luck to you. <laughs> Doug, here's the deal. If something happens to you in the salon, complain before you leave. It will, pre it will preserve your rights.